Hello everyone, my name is Sherry Overstreet and I am the host of Back to Life podcast and this is episode one. I am so thrilled to be here. Wherever you're listening from, maybe you're watching on YouTube, wherever that is, I am sending you lots of love and gratitude for you being here. And speaking of gratitude, I want to give a shout out to a couple of people. And actually, that's something that I'm, that I'm going to be doing at the beginning of each podcast. So this, that part is scripted. It's, uh, I think it's really important to express gratitude. And I have learned this from the none, none other than little Chief Tommy, little Chief Master Sergeant Tommy Pelfrey, if you're listening. I love you to death. And I'm so grateful for you for teaching me that gratitude is not a feeling, it is an expression. And so... Hats off to you. He's given me two gratitude rocks and he's been very inspiring and motivating me to just keep up with the attitude that I have because he says it's a good one. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stand on that rock. And so thank you, Chief Master Sergeant Tommy Pelfrey. We were in the Air Force together back in the 90s, I believe 95, 96, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit earlier. So it's totally aging both of us. And that is okay. So anyway, big shout out to him. And there's a couple other people that I would like to recognize because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for these two. And the first one I want to recognize is Rod Harmio. If you're listening, you are my brother from another mother. I just am so grateful for you. Back when all this stuff happened with me, with the diagnosis, he was one of the first people to call me and say, no, uh -uh, we're not doing this thing. We're not doing this cancer thing. Uh, you got this, whatever you, whatever, whatever, you're like, there's just no way or it's not time for you to go. Like, I really believe he was a messenger from God. <laughs> and he was one of the first people that said, you need to do a podcast. You need to get this out, this, me- these messages out. You have a lot to express. And I have been putting it off and putting it off. And so finally, here we are. And I, I just wanted to give a big shout out to him because this would not be happening if it wasn't for his persistence, I guess you could say. So thank you to him. And then there's another one person. And again, I, I, I have so many so many people to thank, and I'm going to dedicate my podcast to all these people that you'll you'll hear about. Uh, the second person is Connie Aller. I you are just, I mean, the best. And the past couple of weeks, she's been saying, well, you know, like let's do. When are you going to do it? When are you going to do the podcast? And I had to tell her a date because that's just how we are. You know, we, we hold each other accountable and I'm so grateful for that. And so this is the date. This is, this is now we're doing it right now. And she has been with me since the start of all of the events that I'm going to talk about and has been there for me, no matter what, if I call her and say, Hey, can you come with me? I, there's a hard thing I'm facing. She's like, yep. When is it? Well, I'll rearrange what I got going on. I'll be there. And I really think that we need I definitely needed that in my life and I have it and I'm so grateful. And so anyway, shout out to her. So, all right, that's it. Gratitude, right? Love it. And so now we're going to dive into the story. And if you see me looking off here is because my monitor is over here and it's very distracting and I'm looking at the camera this way. So if you see me looking off if you're, if you're watching, I'm just not being weird. It's just a screen anyway. So, Let's start. So back in November of 2022, I was hospitalized. I was, I went to the emergency room and at the Cheyenne VA because that's where I went. It was the closest to me and I wanted to go to the VA because that's where my benefits are. And there's a fly in here. I don't know what the heck is going on. Uh, anyway, so I went into that ER because I had, I was walking to the post office and I was feeling out of breath and my heart was beating really fast. I felt I was going to pass out. So I went home and I called the nurse triage nurse and they're like, yep, you definitely need to come to the ER. Whenever you mention heart anything, it doesn't matter. They're just like, go to the ER because they don't want to take a chance that you're having a heart attack. And I just thought like, I'm too young to have a heart attack. I don't, I don't know. Like, this is weird. And it was especially weird for me because I've been athletic almost all my life and I've hiked and I've done all these things. And then all of a sudden I'm not feeling that great. And I had just got back from Costa Rica. I had been in Costa Rica for about a week and just, I really needed some time to decompress and to be with myself and to 
just be alone and be in nature and, and just have a good time in Costa Rica. And so that's what I chose to do because I had been working a lot up until that point. I was working in, as a licensed counselor in the state of Colorado and I was do you know, I was I had probably 25 clients a week, so pretty much full time because, you know, notes and everything very busy. And then plus I was also facilitating for a personal development company and it was just really grueling and it was really wearing me down and at the time I didn't know that I was tanking and I didn't know it and I found out that I was when I was in the hospital so went into the hospital they're like right away this fly is really annoying and so this is accept the fly accept the fly and I might have to stop and kill it uh, no we don't kill things anyway so I basically um, was tanking. They said that my oxygen was about 77. You know, normal is like 90 to 100. So I wasn't even in the normal range. It was unhealthy. My, my hemoglobin was tanking. I think it was like below a six. And then which healthy range is like 12.7 to put it into perspective for you or 12.6. Actually, if you hit 12, you're probably doing pretty good. And then um, platelets were really, really exceptionally low. They need to be like 150,000 and mine were like 50 or maybe even 20. I don't remember the number, but they were very low. So they were like, we don't know what's taking your blood. All we know is that we have to admit you and we need to give you a transfusion. So I ended up getting a blood transfusion right away. Actually, I think it was a platelet transfusion first. And then they went into the they gave me a blood transfusion and so um, so anyway I'm admitted to the hospital I'm on oxygen all this is going on and I don't know what's happening I feel like I'm in a fog and that this is not reality this is the, what I was experiencing call I remember calling my sister in New Mexico and she's like well because I texted the family and said hey I don't know what's going on I'm in the ER not sure what is what's happening and then I ended up calling her and I was like well they're gonna admit me they still don't know what's going on and she said well do you want me to come come there as soon as she said that I started crying and I didn't even say yes or no and she's like I'm on my way and so she she came down and uh and also I'll say to you too that I had a moment where I was in the ER and I was laying in the ER not knowing what was going on hadn't been admitted yet and Connie texted me and I, well, I let her know I was in the ER because I told her that I was feeling bad earlier. And she goes, oh, well, do you want me to come down? And I had that moment where I was like, wow, I don't know if I want her to come down. I don't want to put her out. I don't want to, you know, make her have to do this. And who wants to come to the, sit in the ER? Like, that sounds awful. And so I, I had this moment of clarity where I was like, wow, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really robbing myself of a gift and I'm actually robbing her of giving me one. So I decided to say yes to her and she came down. And again, I didn't know what was going to happen. And so she came down and, and while she was there, that's when they admitted me. And so thank goodness for her being there because she was telling me, yeah, you have to have an advocate in these things. I didn't know anything about it. Like I don't, I don't have medical stuff going on ever. Like, you know, I haven't had an, much of anything. I, I go get my physicals every year. That's it. I don't have these issues. So I didn't know anything about that advocacy. And it, man, it's so important that I've learned <laughs> through this whole thing. And so she's advocating for me. She's, she's basically my ears. And I also have learned that you hear things totally different as a patient than you do as somebody on the outside of it. And that's been, that's been really eye opening for me as well. So anyway, she's there. We end up getting, I, not we, I, she didn't get admitted. I got admitted. She came upstairs with me. We, we, you know, we hung out. She was there till like almost two in the morning before they kicked her out. Like, uh, visiting hours were over like at 10. So anyway, she, she was really great. And the doctor came in and talked to me and he spent an hour with me. I don't think I have ever spent one hour with a doctor. And he was asking me so many questions and he was like, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm gonna turn over every stone. There's not gonna be anything left unturned. We're gonna figure this out. 
And I really like that because I don't think I've ever had a doctor say that to me. And so that was really refreshing and he was just so great. And the care there was great. So anyway, uh, so they're asking all these questions and then she, Connie leaves the next day. They're, I mean, they're running all kinds of tests. They're taking so much blood for me. And they, did a, they actually did a stool sample and that stool sample was positive for traces of blood. And I'm gonna, that's just a pen. And we're gonna come back to that because that's gonna, that'll lead into the other things that, are, that have happened. So anyway, the, uh, they were doing all these tests and one of the doctors did a breast exam and found a mass under my right breast that was about four centimeters. And they also found a swollen lip node on my right armpit was about 1.5 centimeters. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we got to do a PET scan. We got to do, we got, we got to do a mammogram. We got all these things, right? And they're like, well, we're not going to be able to do all that stuff here because we don't have all of that technology. It's going to take forever. So we're going to actually send you to the Aurora VA. So I had a nice, lovely, bouncy ambulance ride to the VA in Aurora on my birthday, November 18th, 2022. Uh, 52 years old and I am having my birthday on the way to the VA in Aurora. Um, I did have a, a lot of friends come on my birthday and brought me thing, balloons and cards and it was really cool. I, I, they sing happy birthday. It was just really awesome to have that support and I'm incredibly grateful for that. So it wasn't a bad birthday, I'll just put it to you that way. So anyway, I had a lovely bouncy ambulance ride to Aurora. I get there, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, waiting, get into the room and they're like, we got to give you a blood transfusion. I, uh, again, so I got another blood transfusion. They were kind of alternating between the blood transfusions and the platelet transfusions. And so that's where we were at. I, uh, anyway, the hospital stay was interesting. I had a lot of visitors and there was a point where I was so worn out from that like I, I didn't want to reject anyone or push them out however it just came to a point where I was in a fog and I was repeating the same things over and over and I didn't really know answers and so it just was it was really draining my energy so I had to uh, make a decision to say like I just have to stop for, for a while um, and that was difficult because I really wanted to see people um, however my health was like very critical at this point so I took that on to say like I have to have a boundary and I had my sister I was like no more I just I'm not able to do it and so I had family I had some close family there and that was it and then I was released after <laughs> release it sounds like I was in prison kind of felt like it at times I was let go after seven days came back home still didn't really know what was going on and my uh uh, my sister anyway was there. So a week after that, we, uh, we went back to the VA. So I'd go, I'd go back every week and get transfusions. And then um, the oncologist, I met with the oncologist one day and you know, went into the office and they had all the results of everything. They did the, the mammogram and the biopsy of it, of that and all that stuff. And they were like, yeah, you have a uh, stage four metastatic breast cancer. It has metastasized to your bone marrow. And I, I will tell you that at that moment I was, I think I just had an outer body experience. I didn't run away. I didn't, nothing. I just, I basically froze. And I didn't have any sort of reaction. It was mostly flat, flat line. And my sister cried and later on we talked about it. She goes, you didn't even really react to it. I, I just don't think I was ready to hear it. And it was very, uh, very shocking to hear. And I think that everybody responds to these things differently. Um, my crying didn't come till way later. My breakdown didn't come till way later, which I'll talk about in future podcasts. Uh, anyway, so that was the diagnosis. So we knew what was taking the blood, all that stuff. And they were like, well, we have to start, you know, we're going to start on this treatment. However, we, we're not able to start on any treatment because your blood is tanked. 
So if they had started on anything, it would have, could have killed me. And then also I was like, the other part I wanted to, to go to was, can you just take the mass out, like cut these things off, like whatever you got to do to get this mass out. That's what I really wanted them to do was the surgery. And they're like, it's too, it's too risky. We're not doing surgery. And thank God that they didn't do it. Thank God that, that nobody listened to me uh, because I still have my breasts. Thank goodness. I didn't have to have any surgery. So we will get into the miracles of all of this um, and podcasts too. So I, um, yeah, so that's where we were at. And I was in a fog mostly. And I ended up having my, my aunt came down to take care of me through this whole diagnosis thing and, or diagnosis to uh, the blood stuff and all of the things that were going on in my, um, in my system. And I, uh, I remember having a moment with Connie where we were sitting down. She said, this is what, you know, I got all this information from the hospital, which is so overwhelming. I mean, I'm talking like packages of info. I didn't even know like where to even start with it. And I don't remember half the stuff they told me, to be honest, is so much. And, you know, you're, you're dealing with a lot, like if, you, if you've ever experienced any kind of hospital stuff. Um, anyway, so I had a, uh, uh, yeah, just overload. And so thank goodness I had people like Connie and my sister and they're like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna help you every, every way we can. My aunt came down to help take care of me which was awesome. Um, I had to get put on oxygen because again, most for like, I hadn't, hadn't started any treatment yet. So it was like, literally I'm on the couch, pretty much tanking and the, the transfusions were helping somewhat. Um, my blood levels were going up and that's what they wanted. It just seems like it was happening very slowly. Um, so my Thanksgiving was spent on the couch tanking and my family, I remember my family being in the, all, everybody was in the kitchen and I just felt really alone and I felt um, getting emotional thinking about it, brings back a little bit of a, of a heartbreak was, I'm the one that's supposed to be in the kitchen doing that, right? I'm the mom, I'm the, you know, and it's a very humbling experience and I realized that this is just my time to be taken care of. And I, I have to allow myself to be taken care of. And one of the big things, and I've always known this mentally, is that self-care, we, we, we know, I've talked about this as a therapist, as self-care is so important and uh, it's, deeper than that like I think I feel like self-care is like a cliche word like oh do a massage or do this yeah that's great however it's even more than that it's basically listening to your body and what your body is telling you and I I'm going to admit to you I was in I was in fight or flight and didn't take a lot of time to stop and really listen to myself I created a method called the love method and I didn't even hardly use it on myself uh, I will talk more about that because it's a really powerful method actually has helped a lot of people and I'm back to it. I, I do use it now and I listen to my body's messages and like, for example, if you're tired, go to sleep, like go take a nap, go rest. It's one thing I did not do a lot of was resting and it's so important to your system and I've learned, you know, just tons of things about the body and about your lymphatic system and your neuro your your brain and your you know all of that stuff and I uh if you have if you have ever heard of Louise Hay she's somebody really important to check out and uh, she was um she healed of a cancer and she believed that your body your, your body's, uh, different parts of your body have different messages. So for me, I really dived into looking at the breast, like looking at what the breast cancer was about and asking, hey, well, what do you want to teach me? And I think this is such a really 
different place to be than why me? And I did go into that a little bit, I'll admit it, because it's it's easy to do. Is like, well, why me? Like, I'm I'm a therapist, I help other people and I'm I wanna do good things in the world. Like I like what? <laughs> like, why is this happening to me? Is this a test? Am I being tested? Everything I've taught everybody else, now I'm being put to the test. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Uh, I think it's important to change it to what, not why me, what, what is the reason? Like, what are the messages behind it? And what can I do with it versus why me? And this is why I'm doing the podcast because it's going to help lots of people. I, I started to realize as I've gone through this is that when somebody hears stage four or actually even if they hear the word cancer automatically there's fear automatically there's fear even in my body there was so much fear that came up and there's a lot of fear around it and there's a lot of fear language around it and it's a fight and it's a struggle and it's a battle and it's you know you have to fight for your life and that's what this is about, is not fighting for your life. It's living your life. And I came back to life from this and that uh, living proof that you can live with this, whatever it is, whatever obstacle you have, whether it's a, a brain injury or a car accident or another type of disease, like it's, not necessarily a death sentence because the truth is that we're all dying, you know, and that's a, that's the thing that uh, uh, this has taught me is that we're not invincible. None of us are invincible. And the one thing that is for sure is our bodies will change. Things will change in your body. Your body will change as you get older. There is no way you're going to stay in the body you have forever. It's just not going to happen. It's going to change as you grow, as you get older. And we're all dying in a sense. And uh, I think that for me, I would say that I was, one of my big epiphanies was I was, have, was having a spiritual crisis where I just had no, I didn't feel connected spiritually to anything. I was, I was dry bones literally <laughs> like it and physically my bones were were uh my bone marrow was you know there was cancer in my bone marrow so it makes sense felt dry spiritually and this has changed all of that and that that uh um that part of it is 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 very fascinating to me and i'm excited to talk about that in the second second podcast i uh i don't want to go too long about this. However, I am hoping that you will learn a lot. I am going to be talking about mother wounds and father wounds and your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual growth, all of those things. I have some great interviews lined up that I'm super excited to share with you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm thrilled to be here and I am going to wrap this one up. It's a little shorter than I had planned. However, I think we're at a good stopping point and I hope that you will continue to listen about this journey. Um, it's all of our journey, actually. Yours, mine, everybody's, all our stories overlap. And so thank you for being here.